the online John McMillan Presbyterian Church. We are still a community of people who are disciples of Jesus Christ, and it is our mission to provide a way for this community and the community surrounding us to know, glorify, and serve God. And it's our hope that our online worship, our online fellowship today, will bring us all into God's presence. Rather than friendship pads, of course, which are in the sanctuary, and that's where you aren't, uh, we would like you to check in with us if you're watching on Facebook and let us know that you're there. Uh, just so that we can see who came uh, to worship with us this morning and offer a little prayer for each of you and a prayer of thanks for joining us on this bright, sunny Sunday morning. Also, if you have prayer requests, uh, please send them in. You can use Facebook Live to do that, or you can just send them into the church office by way of email. But remember, if you do it on Facebook, it is a public uh, Facebook presentation, and so your prayer request will go out to everyone who's watching on Facebook, and so be aware of that as well. Also, if you have needs, or you know people who have needs, please let us know on Facebook, or please let us know by emailing those needs to the church office. Uh, your staff is going to try to meet as many needs as we can while keeping our social distancing intact, uh, but we want to know if you need anything, even if it's just a phone call, even if it's just a quick prayer, even if it's just a hello, how are you doing, uh, call us. Uh, Matt and I will be returning your calls as we can uh, to make sure that you are well and spiritually uplifted. So we do have some announcements this morning that I want to share with you. First of all, we're asking that you please bear with us as we have our first online service. Uh, this is one of those first time we ever did this sort of moments. And so there are going to be imperfections, and it's probably not going to be the way we want it to be or as good as we want it to be. Uh, we will continue to make it better, uh, but we need to know your comments about that as well. But show us some grace, uh, because uh, we know that we are doing this for the first time. We're also going to be continuing with our online community. It will improve and expand it over time. Uh, and here are some things that we are actually doing right now. Uh, we are continuing our support for the homeless through the Family Project organization, but all we can do for them right now is to provide them financial support as they seek to find a place where their homeless families can uh, be uh, in social distance with each other. Also, we're going to continue to, port to support SHIM, uh, but they too don't need volunteers. What they need is financial support so that they can provide for the needs of those who are currently unemployed as a result of the pandemic and will be coming to them in the near future seeking help to pay their rent and to pay their utilities. We're also going to continue to support our uh, partner church in Duquesne, uh, First Presbyterian Church, uh, but as of now they have told us they are not in need of anything, but they will be in touch with us as soon as they do, and they expect to have some needs down the road, and we want to be prepared for that as well. We're also planning some other activities and some other mission work uh, during the course of uh, our shutdown. Uh, and please uh, stay tuned to find out what those may be in the coming days and coming weeks. And lastly, we have created a Facebook page, uh, a Facebook group page, uh, the purpose of which is to provide Bible lessons for children. Uh, this will take the place of Children's Church, uh, and it will be managed by Emily Shabilla and Caitlin Smith. Uh, and just remember, just because church is closed doesn't mean the church school is closed. Uh, we have online education from the schools, the public schools, and we will also have some online education from the church school as well. So please look up the uh, John McMillan Facebook group page for the children's activities. And then stay tuned for more online activity as we move through our social distancing requirements. And now, even though we can't join together, we can share the peace of the Lord with each other. And so may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Will you pray with me, please? Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom all no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friday morning, I decided to sleep in a little bit. 
I woke up at the normal time around six o'clock, which is when I normally wake up, and it was raining and it was raining hard. And so I decided I was just gonna roll over and sleep for a while longer. But then I heard a little whine from the bottom of the stairs. And then there was another whine from a different source, also at the bottom of the stairs. It was Lucy and Roxy, my dogs. I looked at the clock. It was seven o'clock. Now my usual routine in the morning is to take Lucy and Roxy to a local cemetery so that they can run off leash. And we always leave the house around 6.30 in the morning. It's their routine as well. And they might be dogs, but they know what time it is in the morning. It's time to go for the run. And they were ready to go, but they were ready to go a half an hour ago. And their whining was to let me know that, to remind me, to tell me that they were not happy that the routine had been violated. I was and am very sympathetic. One of the things I crave in life is a sense of rhythm, a sense of routine. I like predictability. It's comfortable. It gives me peace and it makes me feel like I have some control over my life. Psychologists agree. They say that routine and predictability give us the feeling that we are in control of our lives. Control even over the world around us or at least that part of it with which we interact. So what happens when all that goes away? What happens when it seems that the world that we live in descends into chaos. Our routine is gone, there is no predictability, we feel like we have no control, we get anxious, we get angry, we get frustrated, we get depressed, and we grieve. That's it, we grieve. We grieve over the loss of our routines, over the loss of the certainty that we had in the future. We grieve over the loss of the world which we knew merely three or four months ago. Because the coronavirus has destroyed just about every one of our routines, that's what we're feeling now. We are all struggling emotionally. We are all anxious. We are all angry. We are all frustrated. We are all depressed. And we sit and we ruminate on our lost perception that we are always going to be healthy and that we are always going to be safe. And so what do we do when we're in these circumstances? Well, we need to recognize that we can't control everything. We need to let that idea go. Letting go of control, though, is not the let, God and let, uh, let go and let God mean. That implies that we just stay in bed, watch Netflix, and let God take care of us. That is bad theology. And the Bible doesn't support that anywhere. Letting go of control is first learning how we can be calm in a crisis, and second, to do some small thing that makes things just a little bit better. So first let's talk about staying calm. Well this does require some effort. We have many worries. I'm not going to give you my list of worries because I don't want to suggest worries that you don't have yet, and we all have our own list. So how, does, how do we remain calm when we have these long lists of worries? Well, one of the things we can do is we can read Paul. And so our scripture reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Listen to and hear the word of the Lord. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me, please? Lord, we are separate this morning, and so we have not come together as the body of Christ, but we have come together as the body of Christ online and in spirit. And so we ask that you be with us in this time. And Teach us what your word would have us know. And so we ask that you touch our hearts and our minds so that we can hear the word the way you would have it heard, so that we can understand the word the way you would have it understood, and so we can live the word the way you would have it lived. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Well, that's kind of hard to understand when we are all so worried right now. And remember that Paul is not saying that there is no reason to worry. He admits that there are reasons to worry, and he suggests that we should give those worries up to God. It's not a let go and let God mean. What Paul says is that we should offer all our worries to God in prayer, not expecting God to take them all away, but to expect our prayers to give us some peace, the peace of knowing that God is right there with us, beside us, with us throughout the entire crisis that we find ourselves in. And Paul simply says that when we pray, we are given the peace of God, that we feel God's presence, even if it's just for a moment, in a sense of calm, in a sense of peace. And then we can go about the business of our daily lives, meeting the needs of ourselves and our families and the needs of those around us, which is easier said than done. The problem is, is that in times like these, we can be overwhelmed with our worries. We can't find the words that express our pleas to God. We don't know what to say, and we don't know how to say it. We don't even know what the entire list is. And so how do we sit down and pray to God and feel his presence? So here's the good news. We are given outlines of prayers. We are given words that we can use in prayer, even when we can't find the words, even when we can't put together the kind of prayer we want to pray. Those outlines are found in the Psalms. Try Psalm 3 this morning. Listen to Psalm 3. O Lord, how many are my foes! Many are rising against me. Many are saying to me, There is no help for you in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield around me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cry aloud to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and sleep. I wake again, for the Lord sustains me. I am not afraid of tens of thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Rise up, O Lord. Deliver me, O God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. May your blessings be on your people. Psalm 3 is what we call a prayer for help of an individual. It's a plea for help, a statement of trust that God will respond to that plea. But there's another prayer we're much more familiar with that also gives us the words we need to use. It's the Lord's Prayer. It's the same thing. It also is a psalm seeking God's presence in our lives in difficult times. Listen to the Lord's Prayer from Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Our Father in heaven... Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. The Lord's Prayer calls on God for help. The Lord's Prayer proclaims trust that God is going to respond to that request for help. And so here are two prayers that you can offer, Psalm 3 and the Lord's Prayer. And when you offer these prayers, insert your list of worries. When you pray Psalm 3, tell God about your many foes, like the coronavirus, loneliness, fear, and sadness that you are feeling. And when you pray the Lord's Prayer, tell God about the, the bread, forgiveness, and protection from the evil one that comes after you that you need like the empty shelves you find in the stores, the anger that you feel, and the temptation to ignore public health warnings. And while you are listing these things, don't be afraid to express them in the emotion that you're feeling at the time. It's okay to vent, to rant, to plead, to cry, to accuse. And then after all this, pause. Take a deep breath and be present with God. It's then that Paul says, the peace of God surrounds our hearts and our minds. We 
can then let God be a non-anxious presence in our lives. And then, then we can do something. So what do we do? Well, Jesus says this. Strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be, bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Well, I think we can all agree with that. But what does something like that look like today? What does striving for the kingdom look like today? What does worrying about what we can do today look like? Well, Thursday, I was on a video conference about communicating with congregations as we shelter in place, and I heard something that I really needed to hear, and I think everybody needs to hear it. The best demonstration of Christian love during the pandemic is not being together. Hear that again. The best demonstration of Christian love during the pandemic is not being together. Simply put, love your neighbor. Don't spread the virus. But there are other things that we can do other than isolating ourselves from the community. As I was reading in preparations for this message, I came across an article from the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association written some time ago, and it had what I believe to be a great list of things we can do even when we are alone in times like these. First, pray deeply. And here at John McMillan, we do that. So you can email your prayers to the church office, and we will make sure that they get to the prayer team online so that they can pray about your concerns. We have a prayer team that is waiting for uh, you to send those in, and they will pray with you and for you. And one way to do this is to use Facebook or Zoom or YouTube so that there is more personal presence, and we will need to figure out how to do that down the road. Second, immerse yourself in the Bible. While our Bible studies are on hiatus, the daily devotions can fill this need. Matt and I continue to fill the, uh, to prepare these daily devotions, and we'll, and we'll do that at least through Easter and probably thereafter as long as we are confined. But these do not replace the need to pull out your Bible and read it, particularly with your kids. It's okay to get out the children's Bible that probably a lot of you have or most of you have and, or something you can get online to read Bible stories to your kids because they need to hear about Jesus in these difficult times too. Third, guard your heart. And this is a very important one. This means turn off the news. Stop reading the clickbait on social media and promote real science information from the World Health Organization, the Centers for Disease Control, and the Pennsylvania Department of Health. Do not spread any fake news. Do not fall into the trap of watching the news all day long only increasing your anxiety. Turn off the TV. Look at the news once a day. Look at the social media once or twice a day, just so that you can keep up to date. But do not focus on it. Do not become consumed by it. And while the recommendations do seem to change moment by moment, it is entirely appropriate to disengage and distract your anxious thoughts with books, movies, puzzles, games, Cooking, exercise, music, all, core, all sorts of things. And if you have something that you really like to do, then share it with someone else, and maybe they can do it with you online. Fourth, care for others. If you know anyone who is alone, call them and say hello. If you know anyone who is unemployed, call them and ask if they need anything. If you know anyone who is overwhelmed, Call them and offer a few kind words of encouragement. If you know someone who needs food, go to the store for them and drop off the food at their door or use some of the food that you have in your pantry or your refrigerator. Take it to them so that they can feel comfortable and know that they will have food. Now with John McMillan, we will continue to support SHIM and First Presbyterian Church of Duquesne and Family Promise financially but we are also looking at other ways in which we can gather food and share it with others. And so please keep in, uh, keep in contact with us so that we can let you know how that will work. And lastly, support crisis ministry. 
Be sure to encourage other agencies and volunteers who are trying to do one small thing to help people in crisis. One organization in Mount Lebanon, a group of people who have an online group, got together and found out that there was a local shelter uh, that was unable to serve food to the women who were sheltering there from abusive relationships. And they decided that they were going to make hoagies and take them over to that shelter so that the people could eat. And what happened when they announced that, one of the local hoagie shops made all the hoagies that they needed for half price. And so the women donated the money and their time to take the food to that place and serve those people their lunch and their dinner that day. These are the kinds of things we can do as a community, and we can do it safely, even with the social distancing recommendations. That's what we can do today. That's what we can do today. But things will change, because that's the way things have been during, out, during this pandemic. Things are changing moment by moment. But we can worry about the change that's going to happen tomorrow, tomorrow. Today, do that little thing that you can to make things just a little better for those around you. And when we do these things, they become part of our routine. And then we feel a little more in control. And we feel the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And then we can pray a different psalm, a psalm of thanksgiving, which Paul also recommends in his letter to the Philippians. And so listen to the words of the psalmist. Psalm 30. I will praise you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name, for his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. As for me, I said, in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. But your favor, O Lord, you have established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made appeal. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will dust praise you? Will I tell you your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and have clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever and ever. Amen. Well, the advice I gave you was is that we need to pray deeply. And so now is the time we will come together and offer our prayers. And as I said before, if you have prayer requests, make sure that you send them into the church office or post them online so that we can all pray together. But will you pray with me this morning? Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and the fearful. Lift up all who are brought low, that we may receive you in comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. Lord, you taught us to love our neighbor and to care for those in need, as if we were caring for you. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend to the sick, and to assure the isolated of your love and our love. Lord, be close to those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation. Lord, we ask that you be with Marielle, Noah, and Lily Brown this morning as they uh, recover from Marielle's recent uh, hospitalization. We ask that you give them comfort and strength in this difficult time. We ask that you be with the people who are in their loneliness, need your consolation. In their anxiety, need your hope. In their darkness, need your light. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain now, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength. Lord, keep in your special care those who are continuing to work to supply the needs of your people. 
the grocery workers, the pharmacy workers, the first responders, the people delivering meals on wheels, the veterinarians, the psychologists, the people that must go and be with the people in their need. We ask that you be present with them and keep them safe. Lord, we also want you to give skill, sympathy, and resilience to all who are caring for the sick, the doctors, the nurses, the physical therapists, the people in hospitals, the people who are caring for folks at home. We ask that your wisdom be given to those searching for a cure and that all of them be strengthened by your spirit. And through their work, we may all be destroyed, uh, restored to health. And lastly, Lord, help us to remember that we are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbor's safety, even if it means staying away from our neighbor. We're not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are people who can leave those items on the shelves at the grocery store so that others can have food as well. We are your people, God, giving and loving wherever we are, even if it's online, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us to be. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us this prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, now is the time during a typical worship service that we collect the offering. But we can't collect the offering this morning here because it's just me and Matt and Tony. And so what we need you to do is we need you to keep sending the checks in that you normally would drop in the basket. We need you to keep donating online through the website, or we need to keep you using Give Plus uh, to make your donations to the church because we still need our financials to uh, remain robust so that we can do our ministry and mission here. Uh, and so if you are dropping something off at the church, uh, please do so. If you're mailing something in, please do so. Know that someone is coming to the church every day to make sure the mail is brought in and donations are placed in the safe and the counters will come in uh, to make sure the money gets deposited as quickly as possible so that we can use it again in ministry and mission. So as you are thinking about how you're going to do that, or maybe you're using your Give Plus on your phone right now, well, I would ask that you pray with me. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, to the one who gave us himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And so now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And be safe. Amen.